In the world of politics, there are ideas, concepts, and policies that are considered radical or unthinkable at different times. Something that you don't do for fear of consequence, be it political, social, legal, or economic. Yet despite these constraints, political actions that are at one point considered political suicide later become the public consensus, or vice versa. For example, as recently as 2008, my home state of California, about as left-wing as you can get, voted to ban same-sex marriage. But as of writing this, same-sex marriage has been legal across the entire country for nearly three years. That's a pretty big change in one decade. Here's another example from about 10 years ago. When Barack Obama was elected in 2008, it was not uncommon to hear him being called a socialist, which he ardently denied. And if you were one of the people who did call him one, you were probably call a racist. But now, as of 2018, a self-professed socialist almost won the Democratic Party's nomination and is considered a front-runner for the nomination in 2020. That's another big change from only 10 years ago. So how does this happen? How does something that was politically infeasible 10 years ago become the political norm today? Well, within the realm of political science, there is a concept called the Overton Window. Picture the political spectrum as a graph. You could do a simple left-right one if you wanted, but I personally prefer the political spectrum with both an X and a Y axis. Now imagine the different points of the graph represent different extremes. Conservative and liberal on one axis, with anarchy and totalitarianism on the other. All the different points on this graph represent different parties, ideologies, and policies. Now imagine a box on this graph. All the points that fall within this box are considered politically possible, with the points closer to the center of the box being considered more feasible. Everything inside the box are things that political actors can enact or propose with little to no political consequence. Everything outside the box is considered politically infeasible and cannot be proposed or enacted without consequence towards the actor. This box is referred to as the Overton window because within it you can see everything that is possible. But as I mentioned before, political options change over time. That's why same-sex marriage is legal and millions of Democrats now proudly call themselves socialists. The Overton window doesn't remain static. It changes over time. Sometimes it moves or it changes size and shape. And when these aspects change, so does what is politically viable. So now that we know what the Overton window is and what it demonstrates, how exactly does it move? Well, there are three main ways that the Overton window can change places. The first is movement by crisis. This movement is largely reactionary. When something big and out of most people's control happens, they become more willing, and in some cases more demanding, of actions and policies outside the window. This crisis moves or enlarges the Overton window to include once suicidal actions as possible, or even make it public consensus, depending on the scale of the crisis. A recent example would be the September 11th terror attacks. It was something that was, for the most part, unforeseen. It caused people to panic. With 3,000 people dead, the public consensus on personal liberty changed, and everyone was willing to put up with more extreme government action in order to remedy the crisis. This, of course, resulted in nearly two decades of war in Afghanistan and the Patriot Act, which a certain former vice president hopes everyone forgets was his idea before he runs for president. And like that, the window had shifted and grown to the right. The crisis doesn't have to be about national security. It can also be economic. And the 1929 stock market crash and subsequent Great Depression was a big crisis. Now, contrary to popular opinion, Herbert Hoover was far from non-interventionist during the Great Depression. But that's a video for another time. Regardless of myths we tell ourselves about history, the Great Depression shifted the Overton window to the left as people wanted the government to provide more for the financial needs of individuals. This resulted in President FDR pushing through his New Deal programs, which were an unprecedented expansion of federal power, and has had a lasting impact on the face of government to this day. The second means of moving the Overton window is an active approach which I like to call gradual persuasion. Unlike the crisis mover, which is sudden and out of people's control, Gradual persuasion is a deliberate effort to change people's minds about a subject over time. In this method, you usually have a group or multiple groups who enact an information campaign to inform the public of an idea, and over time get more and more people to accept that idea. Now, the information isn't always objective or even factual, but both can be used to gradually change the public opinion. Let's use the same-sex marriage example from earlier. The gay rights movement began in the 1960s, and between then and now have waged an active campaign to get more people to accept their lifestyle. First by getting people to tolerate their existence, then by getting people to believe that it's harmless, and gradually moving the goalpost to the point where a plurality of people believe that homosexuality is natural and that same-sex marriage is a social good. They did this through public outreach in the form of parades, as well as getting more and more representation on film and television. Not always positive or even accurate, but gradual persuasion requires baby steps. And they were very successful 
moving the Overton window further to the left. The third major mover of the Overton window would be the charismatic salesman. This method is faster than gradual persuasion, but unlike a crisis, it has an active mover deliberately moving the window. This method involves a very charismatic person, be he a politician or some other prominent public figure, single-handedly persuading the public to move on a particular issue. As per the name I've used here, he is able to move the window by sheer force of their charisma. A late 20th century example of this would be President Ronald Reagan. Regardless of what your opinions on Ronald Reagan or his administration are, what you can't deny about him was that he was charismatic. He was able to get the public to go along with his idea of dramatically cutting taxes. Also contrary to public opinion, cutting taxes wasn't always the MO of the Republican Party. After all, his 1980 primary opponent, Vice President, and political successor George H.W. Bush was against tax cuts at first. Since the 1950s, the top marginal tax rate had been 70% or more, and by the end of Reagan's presidency, it was about 38%, close to a 50% cut, moving the Overton window to the right. There hasn't been that big of a cut in taxes since the Reagan administration, which I think speaks to his charisma. So there you have it, the Overton window, what it demonstrates, and some of its applications. Hopefully now you have a framework for understanding how political change occurs and can either use the information to inoculate yourself to it or to embrace the change yourself. Before I end this video, I have a poll I would like you to respond to by clicking the I in the upper right hand corner. The first question I have for you is about the kinds of videos I make. Do you prefer my history videos or my politics videos? My second question is, do you prefer my videos to be standalone or do you prefer that they be in a series of other directly connected videos? Let me know in that poll in the upper right hand corner. If you like my videos and would like to help me make more, the best way you can do that is by going to patreon.com slash granthurst and becoming a patron. The more money I make there, the more time I can afford to put into making videos. You can also help by sharing the videos on social media, with a particular emphasis on Reddit, which helps more people see the video. I'm also looking for people who can help me with creating captions for the videos, especially if you can make them for languages other than English. And of course, if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. And leave a comment below and tell me what you think of the Overton window and what other political concepts would you like me to explain and explore. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.